Oh, man. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. It doesn't matter what time of day or week or month, year, decade. If someone is listening to this a decade from now, just I'm killing it because that would be that would be insane. That would be fantastic. What's up? How are you? I'm serious. How how are you doing? You know, how, no one might have asked you that today. How, and meant it. People ask you. They go, hey, how you doing? What's up? How's it going? But they don't mean it. I'm telling you right now, I mean it. I want you to take a second and then, well, no, you can do it during this. It's fine. It'll take a second. I want you to take a second and I want you to, you know, body scan. How am I doing? How am I feeling? Where's my tension? What, have I have I hit my goals for today? Do I have tasks set up? Get in that mindset because you're about to hear. A, wow. Okay. The connection I, that how I just made that connection in my brain to what I'm gonna say right now is actually um, pretty uh, wild to me because I was I, I, when I was saying all that I was like, Dylan, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, it's a minute thirty in, and people are gonna turn off this before they even hear um, the amazing interview you have. But anyway, the reason you need to get like that is because the guy you're about to hear is all about setting goals and tasks and Tony Robbins and getting in that mindset. You know who it is, man. It's the naked cowboy, dude. I interviewed him and it was, it was wild. It was one of a kind. Before I go into that, let's do a little check-in with Dylan, okay? And, you know, if you don't like that, if you're like, oh, you know, Dylan, I want to hear about you. I just want to hear the Naked Cowboy. Well, um, that's kind of rude. I just asked you how you're doing and I meant it. But, hey, you know what? That's fine. But I'm going to be saying some kind of uh, pertinent information. It's a great SAT word. Some pertinent information about this interview. And I think you might want to hear it as well. But... Hey, if you only have an hour and not an hour and eight minutes to listen to me talk, go ahead and hit that 15 forward button about, what, four times in a minute, eight, four, 20, wait, four to 32. Hit that about 32 times. Maybe now hit it about 30 times and you'll get to the interview, okay? But if not... You can hear about how I fell yesterday running to work like a straight up toddler. Uh, My foot's purple, actually just my toe, so that feels cool. Uh, I fell in front of an old woman and she screamed, I think both for her life uh, and for mine because I think she saw what was going to eventually happen to her. (laughs) One day, like she for sure knows she's going to have a fall. In her life at some point. And she might have already had it. Maybe it was giving her PS- PTSD. Um, I almost said PSA. Um, yeah, but she ran over to me. Helped me up. Um, two traffic cops walked over. Basically did nothing. They're like, hey, you okay? I'm like, yeah, what the fuck are you guys going to do? And then um, they went back to staring at the same car. Not doing anything. So that was nice. You see that there was two of them doing nothing. Uh, my hip hurts a lot, but it's okay, man. I'm resilient. Um, probably going to get some stem cells for it, but I'm resilient. Okay. I'm 26. I still fall like a child. I have no balance. Uh, it felt great. It felt, it felt real good. That was nice. Um, what else is going on? Uh, for some reason, my entire face is peeling. So that's pretty sick. My nose is just one flake, just, just one, just a giant flake of skin. Um, which feels good. Can anyone relate to that? You guys all, you guys flaking? Hey, what's up? We flaking in here? Yo, yo, what's good, Flake? That'd be my nickname. I'd be Flake. Because my face is just spitting skin at people. Worst part is no one tells you. Like, I walked around all day yesterday thinking like, hey, I look normal. And then I came home and <laughs> I was like, why do... I look like a croissant, just a just a a pastry, just flaking everywhere. I was. A, you guys got some good lotion recs? That's where I'm at in my life. I'm looking for good lotion recommendations. That feels good. 
I I I definitely thought that would be. I thought I definitely was like, man, you know, at 26, um, I'll be losing my hair, which is happening. Uh, talk about it all the time. It's not the biggest dilemma in my life, and about you know how my face is flaking. But you, things happen, all right? They happen. It's okay. And we're already five minutes into this, and you're like, damn, I didn't know I was gonna get this deep into what's going on in Dylan's life. I'm, I'm, I'm happy I didn't hit that that 15 forward button 30 times. And if you did, you're you won't hear this, but you're gonna feel it. You'll feel it. You're gonna feel, man. You're gonna go listening through about 20 minutes, and you're gonna be like, you know what? I probably should have just listened. Maybe I could have heard something good. Um, eh, but you know what? I just care about myself, and I don't think about anyone else. I'm not trying to shame you. No shame. Of course, no shame. Because we're talking about the naked cowboy with zero shame. You see that connection again? That's twice, man. Unscripted. This is first time recording this. If you guys have listened before, you know sometimes I record these things. And then I have to record them again. Because I just don't know how to use technology sometimes. Or I just screw it up. But not this time. First time hitting dingers out of the park. With these connections. Hi, my name's Chris and I hit dingers. If you guys haven't seen that video, you should look it up. So the naked cowboy. Um, I straight up just went up to him in Times Square and was like, dude, I want to I want to interview you. And um, he's pretty cool about it. He's like, yeah, all right. And he like kind of has a southern accent, but he's from Cincinnati, Ohio, which I don't think they have southern accents. But whatever. So... The thing was, I was trying to get him to come to my apartment because that's where I record. Like, sounds it's better for sound. I have a soundboard here, everything. Um, I thought maybe we, we could do it when he had clothes on. No. As you guys will hear, uh, this guy is like straight up psycho. Like, it, it, he really works for this podcast. And not in a bad way. Just like, he is. he's about... He's about being the naked cowboy, and just, that's just what just what he does. So he didn't want to come to my place for an hour and a half because he didn't want to miss the potential of going back out to Times Square. So I had to go to Times Square and go to the parking garage in that general vicinity that he parked in. I'm not going to tell you the exact one. And go into his big-ass Escalade, uh, which I was so surprised that he had an Escalade. I was like, all right, you know, you're doing well enough that you can afford an Escalade uh, and record in the front seat of that. So that's why you you might sound a little bit of echo or anything. It's because we were literally in a car the entire time. Um, and he's got like other costumes in the back. He pulled out some weights and started lifting weights and stuff and looking at himself in the mirror. Made perfect sense. Uh, he put on a... He put on... <laughs> He put on a leather robe, not a jacket, like a robe, dude. But obviously his um, dick and balls were still kind of sticking out as I was interviewing him. And he almost showed them to me. But hey, uh, oh, guess what? He was in Playgirl um, and you can see it. And I know that because I was searching pictures before and one of them that popped up was straight up his hard dick. Uh, <laughs> On Playgirl, uh, so I don't. I wouldn't say look for that, but it is there. You know, the the, the internet has it. So if you want to feature eyes on some some legit naked cowboy, like fully, check that out. There's not a lot more to say. It, I just think it's a really interesting interview and it kind of explains why this guy's been doing it for 20 years and not and does it non-stop he goes every single day like literally can't stop and I would say if you listen like I'm not gonna I'm fucking beg you to listen to the entire episode like listen to as much as you want um but at the end he kind of gets in a little bit to how he wants to be remembered and also um why he can't stop like literally physically can't stop doing it. And it kind of paints this interesting picture about this guy who like he, he reads a lot and uh, I, I thought he just wanted to do it for, for money or fame, but it, it's almost like 
he has a physical addiction to it. It's strange. You'll you'll hear, and I don't know how to explain it. Like I thought it was maybe some kind of it's like a little bit of OCD. He doesn't think it is. I didn't mean it negatively, but there's something there that's keeping him going no matter what. Because this guy goes out in blizzards in just underwear, dude. He just drinks some vodka, takes um. A couple of tokes, which I almost did with him after, but I was like, I gotta, I gotta do other shit. Uh, I, I have to go work, and he's like, Really, you have to go work? I'm about to go into Times Square, um, and then he just goes out there, man. He knows everyone. We were, we were walking up the uh, the parking lot at one point. Some old Chinese guy was walking down with like a a suitcase, and he's like, You need some jin- jinseng? If you need some jinseng, is it jinseng or jinseng? Ginseng. He's like, if you need some ginseng, you just get it from that guy. And he just said, what's up to him and walked away. Talked to some other guy. He was like, hey, man. The guy's like, the guy's like November 8th. He's like, yeah, I know. 10 to 2, I'll be there for the statue. This dude is having a bronze statue of him put in Times Square at November 8th. I'd say go. Check it out. And because 20 years is insane to do anything. Um, oh, he also talks about Trump and... Makes a couple like off-color jokes, but hey, what the fuck do you expect from a guy that is in Times Square all the time? Like for real, okay? Um, I don't know. You, I, I'd say, kind of use this weird, like as some kind of inspiration because if this guy can keep himself going and talk to himself and motivate himself every single day to go on Times Square and just wear underwear and play guitar, then seriously. Anything that we're doing that we kind of feel insecure or second guess ourselves about, we sh- we should just shut the hell up and keep doing it. Because if this guy can, we can like do. Tony Robbins should just bring this guy with him and just be like, look at look look at what the hell this guy's doing. Listen to my stuff, okay? So, so you can create that project that you're doing with Squarespace. Not sponsored by them, but if they hear that and they're like, wow, that was another great connection, dude, <laughs> sponsor me. Please. Okay, we're twelve minutes in. That's a long time, all right. So even if you hit the, even if you hit the fifteen second button, thir- second button, thirty-two times, you're like, oh shit, I have four more minutes. And four times four is sixteen, so you should have actually hit it forty-eight times. But now we're good. We're in it. Okay, I don't need to talk anymore. You guys have, are, are happy. You listen to me. You, some of you definitely fast forward, but it's okay, because now if you listen before. You're going to hear those amazing words. Without further ado, here is the Naked Cowboy. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? We are all psychos. With Dylan Paladino. The, the cowboy car? What do we what do we call the the Yukon or the Escalade? What is it? This is the horse, sir. It's the, it's the horse. This is the horse. This is the horse. Don't don't blow my cover. <laughs> this is the horse. So uh, is uh, is wifey out there today? She she nope. working today too? No, no, she's buying money orders today and buying groceries. Uh, okay, cleaning the house. Ah, uh, she could work any day she wants, but uh-huh. she uh, she's Mexican and they like yeah. to clean the house. That's and- what they do. <laughs> And on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, she wants to be a star, but during the slow days, she likes to... She likes to be at home, just doing the homely stuff. I've been to Mexico City with her, uh-huh. and Juarez, with her mother, came up to see us there. Yeah. They get up, they clean... It's just what they do, you know? Like, in Mexico City, where she yeah. lives, there's no roof. You know, there's like no, the, Yeah? Uh, and they all kind of party every night, everything else. So in the morning, they get up, they clean, they rock, they roll. They, that's that's what your experience has been with her and her yeah, family? Down. Yeah. How'd you guys meet? Uh, she lived. She worked at the Cranberry, uh-huh. right up the street, Forty Fifth. I okay. went in, bought sushi. Mm-hmm. She said, "Papa Cito." I said, "Mama Cito." <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm married. Wow. She's got thirteen sisters. I'm in the Mexican cartel now. She's got thirteen sisters. Twelve, whatever. Gee, that uh, means yeah. yeah. Who's counting? Damn. That's how long you guys been married? Uh, going on six years. Wow! Congrats, man. And so, what you brought her into the business? Well, you can't just shop and clean the house. I mean, you got to yeah. do some real work, you know. <laughs> she, uh, she was interested. She was interested in becoming the naked cowgirl. She wasn't, but she was a belly dancer and all that 
Okay. You know, so she's, you know, she's... She's performed. She's yeah, performing. She, yeah, she she's a performer. So she, yeah. she w- walked right into it, loved it, and she does it all the time. She loves it. That's great. So you just figured, hey, let's add one more person to the roster. Let's keep it going. Why not? Double the money, <laughs> right? <laughs> sure. How'd this all... So, so where are you from? How'd this all start? Uh, I'm from Cincinnati. Okay. Not naked, not a cowboy. Not naked, not a cowboy. Born in Cincinnati. How was... uh? What was... What was home life like? What was... Perfect. Yeah? Only problem was me. I was a troubled child. Uh-huh. Always causing trouble. A what big attention doing? getter. It's hard to believe it, but... Yeah? Oh, uh, yeah. I never would have guessed. I started off hanging around my ha- mother's house in my underwear. Then I became uh-huh. a uh, lifeguard. Then I became a stripper. Oh, you were a stripper? And then I became a model in my underwear, and now I'm Nate Cowboy. It's, it's been a long history. When did you become... Uh, when, so when did you move to lifeguard, and when, when did uh, stripper happen? Well, I was a stripper all the way through college. Okay. Were you using that to pay for college? Yep, pretty much. Worked out? Yeah. And then somebody said I should be a model. I came to New York City. I lived on the streets. I worked for like uh-huh. two years getting my picture taken, built a portfolio, went to every modeling agency in New York City. Everyone uh-huh. said, you ain't got what it takes. Get the hell out of here. Went home. Went to Nashville. Tried to become a country singer. Same thing. How'd that work went out? Went to the singer-songwriter nights every night, singing, playing guitar. In my clothes, of course. Uh-huh. You can actually pull it up a little bit closer. But there nobody, you, you know, I didn't get any attention there either. Started going to California and doing, uh, you know, uh, what do you call them? Uh, you know, test shoots and I got bit parts and shows, everything else. But bottom mm-hmm. line is that didn't work either. And I had a, a Playgirl shoot in 1997. How'd that go? Well, I was shooting for Playgirl and that was all fine. I got paid to do a, you know. Like five hundred dollars, which was like a million dollars to me at the time. Dick was out. Yeah, it was completely Fully nude, out. spread on a boat and everything else. But <laughs> on my off day, I went to the uh-huh. the boardwalk and I played guitar in my cowboy outfit. But I had pants, everything else. Yeah, yeah. I was completely ignored. The photographer said, "Why don't you play in your underwear?" Which, of course, I was doing nude magazines. I danced in fucking bars all over the country. I, I did everything you could possibly do naked. Yeah, I was naked my whole life. Uh-huh. So I was like, oh, what a great idea. And I did it. Everybody took pictures. I got on the news. They called me Naked Cowboy, and I've been doing it for 27 years since. So this was 27 years. So this was 91? I don't know. Somewhere around then? Well, around that time. 1998. So 1997, uh-huh. I went around the entire country for a year. I got here in 1998. We're doing okay. my 20-year anniversary on November 8th. Yep. In Duffy Square from 11 to 2, we're going to have a bronze statue of the Naked Cowboy brought to Times Square. Wow. And actually, all that stuff I was just saying, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to make it sound like I'm being natural with you, yeah, yeah. but I have to write a little speech I have to do, so I'm trying to uh, run trying through to my bullet out. point. I'm trying to work, you know, I'm always we'll, trying to work we'll on work, what I'm doing. We'll work through the bullet points out now, and then we can get back into the 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 realness of Mr. Cowboy. Or it's, all right, or, I'm or, ready. Real Robert, right? Yeah? Can we That's call fun. you Rob? Call me Bobby. Call you Bobby? No. Bobby's Bobby what you like? I'm kidding. That sounds gay. What are you Whatever friends? you want. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with being gay. What, uh, what, uh, what are your friends Whatever, call you? Whatever, homo. Yeah. <laughs> you sound like my uncle. Uh, what, are your, what do your friends call you, Bobby? Depends yeah. when you met me. Ah, uh, before or after? When I was a kid, I was Bobby. Then I okay. became Bob. Then I became Robert. Now I'm naked, naked cowboy. It doesn't matter. Naked cowboy doesn't matter. I don't care. Just call me. Yeah, just call you? I mean, I, I've called you before. We're doing this right now. Okay, so you're, so you're doing a bunch of things. You're getting in trouble. You're, you're stripping. You're, you're. Did, did you graduate from college? Yes. Okay. What'd you get a degree in? Uh, political science, bachelor's degree in political science from uh-huh. the University of Cincinnati. Then I went to Xavier for my master's. Don't need either one of them because I live right. on my wits. What um? Did, and you got your master's degree as well? No. No. I always, that's that. why I say no. I didn't yeah. drop out of anything. I say. Uh-huh. And I went to Xavier for my master's. Ah, and most okay, people you just assume, it. oh, I oh. know. Most people assume you got it. But no, I went there for a year. I did uh-huh. half of it. And then I went to Hollywood. Ah, uh, okay. Had you always wanted I to didn't do... Need a back- I don't need a backup. It well, took me eight years to figure that out. Took you eight years? When, how old were you when you figured out I don't need a backup? Well, I'm just saying. I, yeah. I continued to work as an eight cowboy, everything else. I didn't, you know, I'm just yeah. saying. And then you realize, like, oh, shit, yeah. I don't... Yeah, I don't need an education. Just live uh-huh. on your wits. Go out live there. On, live on your What do you mean by that, live on your wits? Uh, well, believe in yourself. You know, again, I I came up with the naked cowboy. I was 
freaked and pumped and positive. I'm a big Tony Robbins guy. Yeah. You know, I'm going to set my goals, ultimate success formula. I know what I want. The most celebrated entertainer of all time. The richest, most famous man that ever lived in the history of the world. Exponential growth in my name, brand, and my net worth at all times. This mm-hmm. is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Damn. I can pull out my... I can either pull out my dictaphone right now and you can listen to me say everything I'm saying to you already. Uh-huh. Or I can use my... Uh, I can go in the back seat here and grab my... Uh, Naked Cowboy Dialogue, which is everything that I speak 24 hours a day. So, okay. I'm a, you know, I'm a big goal setter. You know, that's what it is. Set goals. You, you, look, you, you listen to goals, them. Set goals. You listen to it every day. And Affirmations. I'm going to have Naked Cowboy Dollars that are redeemable at NakedCowboy.com. Okay. It will be, I'll be able to use it anywhere as my name. I stamp every dollar I got with Naked Cowboy. I've done that for over a quarter, or over a million dollars in 20 years. I'd rather look desperate and be out taking action and entertaining people than to be desperate and waiting for someone to give me the opportunity to take action and Damn. entertain people. Besides, I buy about them all already. By I've myself. got over a thousand journals since 1998 no. with everything I, I ate, drank, me. smoked, <laughs> read, <laughs> did, Times Square, time every single thing else. Since 1998, this is the exact same document I'm handing you that I've been reading for 20 years, and it's everything else. So this is a this is a diary and or a journal of uh, it's a manifesto. It's manifesto. my goals. It's what I do. I stay focused. Most people don't. That's why they don't do the exact same thing every single day for 20 years and get a statue in Times Square because they are focused on a million different things, uh-huh. and it's very isolating. I often feel lonely. I can't do anything else but this. You know. Yeah, so, how do you... Well, yeah, that, you, that's, well, that's life. You got to choose, pick and choose. You can do a million things or you can do one. If okay. you do one, you're stuck in one. If you do a million, you're, you know, you're dispersed in a million. I mean, it's just, it's just life. So you chose to... To be the most celebrated entertainer of all time. That's right. And you stuck to that. You and I'm not Robbins. stopping. I'm not going to stop till I get there. And so when you first started doing this... It was '97. You came to Times Square in '98. Um, what was what was your family saying? What were your friends saying? When my family, you, yeah. my friends, all men, women, and children of all ages love the Naked Cowboy with all their heart and soul. It's uh-huh. the Naked Cowboy dialogue. You can read it. Yeah, but I'm saying when you first started out, same thing. Really? Okay. No, one... I saw it the way I saw it. Okay. If anything, as time has gone on. I start feeling like maybe they don't see it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you start doubting yourself that more. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm just saying it's, you know. And yeah. again, everything is a product of your mood. Uh-huh. Now it's getting colder right now. I've, you know, it's, it's just the statue thing has been freaking me out. Like, who cares if I've been here 20 years? Maybe the media is not going to show up. Maybe it's going to rain. Maybe I spent $15,000 yeah. on a statue for one damn day and the thing's going to, the hat's going to, or the arm's going to fall off the first, I mean, yeah. I think of everything. 15 k in a statue, man. Yeah. Damn. Worth it though, right? We'll see. That's why again, we'll see. Well, worth it for you, man. You did 20 years, right? We'll see. Again, personally, uh huh. I'm making, you know, Noah did not wait for his ship to come in. He built his own. So, and the same thing. For 20 years, I've been saying I'm going to have a statue in Times Square. If I got to bring it here myself, pay my own damn money, at least I did what I said I was going to do. Period. And because of my faith and diligence in making that happen, God should be ready to redeem me and thank me for it, as he always does. We'll Uh see. We'll We'll see see. if he does. We'll see. But again, you're always doubting. Like, maybe he won't this time. How do you deal with those doubts in your head? I just keep moving forward. You keep moving forward, you don't... I move forward every day, no matter what. And believe me, a lot of times I don't feel like it, but I, uh-huh. you know, you can't help it. It's like when you don't want to get out of bed in the morning, I'm 48, I got to pee. So it doesn't matter if I want to, <laughs> I got to pee. So I get out of bed. Or else you're going <laughs> to pee in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, I don't want to do it twice in one morning. Yeah, and I got you. I got you. So you're so you, you're just big on keeping moving. You don't stop. Tony, the Tony Robbins mindset. I've been reading, mm-hmm. listening to it. Uh, yeah. When I don't feel like it, I mean, I realize it's self-defeating not to. I mean, you know. Yeah. But again, I, again, this sounds negative right now. I'm no, no, you. this doesn't First, sound I'm negative. Saying, this is good. Yeah. It's, it's it's not negative. It's, this is this is what people want to hear because they want they want to get behind the minds of Robert, the guy who you know was traveling all over doing different things, but never stopped and decided, you know what, I'm going to create my own brand. I'm going to go out every single day getting just my underwear, play the guitar, and not give a shit what anyone else. Because you've, you've definitely had haters and people call you out, say you're stupid, and you just didn't listen to them. 
So, I mean, it's it's inspiring to a lot of people, man. A lot of people I see you out there. I, I literally just wrote. I could show it to you. Uh-huh. I keep my journal here. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Good to see. I literally have hundreds and hundreds since 1998. They only last about four weeks. The journals. And you can see that there's my calendar here. Uh-huh. You can see that there's... Times square, times square, times square, times square, times square. You see yeah. set the number of sets at the gym and then whatever happened, you know, that was significant that day. This is three weeks. Mm-hmm. You see that because I'm writing notes every single day, by the time I get to three, you know, three weeks, it's a new journal. It's and just keep done. going. This is the statue date. See the eighth. So I'm going to get a new journal just to, you know, motivate myself. Yeah. So I got seven days. I mean, it was seven, 14, 20, 28. 34 days now i'm down to six so it's like if i start a new journal and i only got seven days like that's exciting you know that's good you're always goal setting and you know you're big on goals well i'm big on staying motivated motivation is a tricky thing well you got to motivate yourself because you've been have you always been this motivated did you have to learn to do it i was born to win you're born to win you got a lot of confidence in yourself man i write it down every day it's all fake but Eventually, you start believing your lies. <laughs> fake it till you make it kind of mindset. I wouldn't say. I don't know. Or just you. you I mean, you got to support yourself because no I'm one else saying, is doing no it. No matter right? how hard you try, and how how hard you how hard you work, and you keep uh-huh. going, you keep rocking, you do it every single day. I'm just saying, you know, you can be you can get tired. I get tired of squeezing asses all day. <laughs> if you get tired of squeezing asses, spanking the girls, and everybody coming up and say they love you, uh-huh. you can get tired of anything. Come on. But, but you just keep doing. Well, I mean, it's very motivating. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you know, I'll go out on a limb one more. Yeah, I'm yeah. going out on another round. You just talk me into it. Ah, uh, you're good. I'm just saying, no matter what you're doing, you get tired of it. You know, you gotta, you got to circulate, you know. you got to find new meaning and you got to find but, excitement. you know, in if it. you stay focused on one thing, I understand you. You can get monotonous, but uh-huh. I'd rather get monotonous of doing something I like than to be totally happy doing a bunch of stuff I don't. Yeah, I mean that's a lot of people. That was pretty gets, profound. That was pretty. That was pretty <laughs> profound right there. Right. That was pretty Woo. profound, Bobby. We got a jewel. We got a jewel right there. I mean, you're. When did you first realize like that this could be something you made money with? Because when you first started doing it, in I'm still trying to figure out if I can make money with it. <laughs> I swear to God, now I've, really? I've had twenty thousand dollar naked cowboy oyster checks. Okay. And then they went completely away. I had a deal with a uh, major world. Okay. Had a commercial. Buenos, bonitos, y baratos. Five thousand dollars every three months. Well, then the commercial went away. Yeah. And now, and last this last winter lasted uh-huh. forever. So like yeah. my savings ran out. I mean, I got money. I keep putting it in my portfolio, but my savings were running out. Yeah. Because the winter kept going on. You know, if it's cold, I'm paying to work. I'm paying for parking. I'm paying the tips. I'm still paying all the homeless people. I'm still paying for everything I have when I have a lot of flourishing cash coming in playing the homeless people yeah oh you mean giving the them same yeah. jackasses to come here every day they give me a dollar give me a dollar you can't say no you give it to them oh if, well you feel i fun. don't want to punch them in the face as much as i do so that's all i'm just saying that face? expenses keep going so in the winter you tend to you know because you got to pay for parking every day to get oh, here well i pay for yeah. everything gas living in queens two thousand bucks for the apartment uh-huh thousand dollars for the vehicle yeah, 300 yeah. for the insurance yeah yeah it goes on you know i'm it saying every going. hit it's like about yeah. six thousand five hundred a month okay and, and if you're relying just on tips tips yeah that you know you don't even break even in the winter because it's freezing but you can have a, <laughs> and i'm naked yeah so so what are you doing during the winter i'm working every single day exactly the same way i go out there two or three days ago it was 40 degrees 20 mile an hour winds it was raining so i just went and walked around all the damn buildings and fucking walked through as many people as i freaking possibly could all damn day for four hours i made like 80 dollars but i stunned the shit out of everybody i saw i'm not gonna stay at home yeah and that is value in itself it's publicity it's people seeing us what i've done for years it is publicity and if i'm not here there's nobody else going to show up in my place. No one's going to do it. Well, maybe you will. I yeah. got the undies for you. I mean, we'll That's might, a little segue into your end. next bit. <laughs> yeah, at the end when I take a picture doing this. Yeah, we might have to take one of those. Wait, so you're doing this even during the winter? I haven't missed a day in 20 years. This is wow. a picture of me here on my card. Yes, yeah, you like That's in Times from Square. the blizzard last year. Wow. I've done. There's been 13 blizzards in the last 20 years. I know because I was here for every one of them. When do you take days off, man? I don't. You don't. 
I'm on like 96 days in a row right now. Uh huh. We did 13 beach days this summer. Beach days. Where do you Monday, go to? Monday. We take a. We go to Rockaway Beach. Uh huh. I have a fake surfboard. Okay. I go as far out as I can, swim in, try to ride the waves a little bit. Been yeah. doing it for about five years. And we did 13 fake Mondays. Surfboard? Huh? What do you mean fake surfboard? Well, I didn't know. I I bought a surfboard. Oh, you just but, bought a board. You know, and, yeah. but they said it's too small for me. It's uh-huh. it's kind of like a foam board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can almost stand up on it. But, <laughs> But I've also rented a board yeah. for 25 bucks for three hours, and it's a much bigger board, yeah. and it's way easier. Yeah, so you've but, gotten up. Yeah, well, I've, I I get the concept. I could uh-huh. probably get up. You could. I'm not trying to be a surfer. I'm trying to be a naked cowboy, so yeah, I have to balance just like everything else. I have to discipline my leisure time because I don't want to get up and get smacked on the head, with, which I've done. Oh, yeah? I smack my balls. I smack my face. I <laughs> get twisted up just doing simple stuff. So again, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be a hero. You know, yeah, it would be a Not hero. Not a surfer. surfing. <laughs> yeah. You're already a hero coming out in blizzards. And I watch Point this. Break every single week when no, we did you that. Don't. Yeah, yes, I you do. do? Keanu Reeves. Yeah. You like that movie? Well, <laughs> I had to feel like a surfer. <laughs> I had to in I had to inundate, you know, the surfing yeah. culture. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. I had to get the rock away and kind of swim out there like uh-huh. I knew what I was doing. I know how to do everything. Get out yeah. there, rock and roll, jump over the waves. I, uh-huh. I mean I'm fierce. Yeah. I just don't know how to surf. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> So, so when you're going out there, you you're you're surfing, but also to promote. Are you in just the naked cowboy underwear, and that's it? No, no, no. I'm no, not. Okay, I'm doing just, your, yeah, okay. I'm doing my same stuff. But I you're, also you have legion time. Every dollar I have is stamped naked cowboy. When I go to the surfer stand and I'm paying really? my twenty five, everything's naked cowboy. I pass out my cards. I get them all bobbleheads. Everyone knows I'm naked cowboy, no you matter where I go. Home. Because yeah, you got to stamp at home. You stamp the hundred dollar bills with, or the one dollar bill with. You work with the feds? What? Not at all, dude. Well, yeah. Here and I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Uh, I, yeah, I've I never stamped you. a dollar in my so life. One, so I would they, never deface they, somehow public property. It, somehow it shows up on the bills. We don't know where it comes from. Yep, exactly. Someone's doing it. A we don't fan. know who. Yeah, a bunch of bunch of fans are doing it. But you said you think there's over, what, $100,000 out there or I'm more than for that? for 20 years. Wow, someone's been doing it for 20, 20 years. Yeah, somebody. Shit. That's, that's why I hear. pretty cool. I haven't seen one yet, but now I want to, now I'm going to have to find one. I'll give yeah, you maybe one. I can get. I gave you one. Yeah, fan gave you one. I guess. Wow. So you, so you're always about um, self promotion. Oh, you got one right there. Wow. Let's see it. The naked. There we go. Oh, you know what? I have seen this. Damn. That's pretty good. Just, just right in print. Naked cowboy right next to George Washington himself. Never heard of him. That's what, <laughs> probably a communist. Probably a damn red scare commie. He's probably one of the one that hacked the election. So what, never happened. To, Trump won fair and square. Fair and square. You did have Trump on your ass when he was running, didn't you? I did. You Trump Pence on the from the time he announced uh-huh. to the time he went to the inauguration. I was at Trump Towers every single day and went to the inauguration and rocked every every bit of it. You were at the inauguration. I got the Trump song played for you. Unbelievable. You got the Trump song too. Did 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 you ever get to meet him? No. No. Would you like to meet him? Mm, eh. care. It's like Tony Good. Robbins. I got what I want from him. Oh, you don't want him? You look up to Tony just, Robbins, but yeah. If I met him, it would be an honor, but I, I just don't, I don't need to. Has Who's been like the coolest person you've been able to meet? You! Not me! Yes, sir! Oh, my God. Oh, damn it. Why are you going to bring it up that. right now? <laughs> Front seat, warm car. Hey, we are in a warm car. But, Coffee. I mean, dude, you've been in Times Square 20 years. You must have seen... Many different people walking through or done private. Po- like, who's the the most influential person you've been able to meet doing it? You know, once I walked right past the kiosk and I saw my reflection, and it was it, it was, was me. That's it. Damn. So you believe so everything much in yourself. else is scenery. No one else matters. No. Yeah. You done parties for famous. I people admire or people. I think they're wonderful. Yeah. I get that. I whatever, but uh-huh. it's not my focus kind of seems like you're just focused on yourself and you don't care about the other people in a good way not in a bad way yeah hey yeah i mean at the end of the day i'm trying to set an example worry about your damn self most people spend their entire lives worrying about everybody else you know uh-huh. basically libs worrying about all the victims oh just uh-huh. if you if everybody minded their own business nobody would have any problems the libtards is that we're saying <laughs> he said it not me <laughs> i think it's a funny word that people make up to try and divide ourselves and we're just talking about politics okay so you i mean it's kind of good man you're not focusing on anyone else you don't you don't spend too much time on social media 
No. Nope. I mean, everything I do, I'll post, you know, on my Instagram, Facebook. Uh-huh. Like, I get a video or something. That's it. I mean, I'm pretty simple. What brought you to political science when you were at Cincinnati? Easiest way out of college after five years. Really? To get That's a degree in something. Get a degree in something. So why'd you even... So when you were 18, when you went to college, did you know that you probably were going to do something performative? Uh, well, basically, again, I read the book Unlimited Power, Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. So yeah. I was just like, I felt like I had to be somebody or do something. Uh-huh. So school was just one of those kind of obvious answers. So I went to school for that reason. Yeah. And then when you were there, did you realize oh, this probably isn't me? Or No, I mean, I loved everything I did. I loved reading. I loved studying. I still do it to this day. You still study? I'm a voracious reader. Never stop studying and reading books. What are you reading? I'm reading my Emerson's essays constantly, never okay. stop. I'm believing Leslie Thiel's uh, heroic individualism. It's all about Friedrich Nietzsche, my favorite philosopher of all time. Like How much yeah. terror and uncertainty can you handle? That life is supposed to be struggle, yeah. and that life, you know, that you know, y- your soul can savor whatever it wants from that struggle, but it wants it, enjoys it, loves it. I mean, you know, my life is a struggle. It's a fight, you know. So I love that. Life's a fight. So, so uh, I, I remember I read, Tony Robbins. I read stuff, Thus man. Spoke uh, Zarathustra. I read that one. That was one. my first, that was uh, first Nietzsche one? book I ever read. So when he said God is dead, how did you interpret that? Because there's been a lot of different essays on what the exact interpretation was. How, mm, how did you I, think about it? I don't know. I mean, In my opinion, the way he's saying it is basically that there are no transcendental idols. There's nothing else to aspire to. You're here today, right now. Uh-huh. Figure out a purpose to be great yourself. Don't worry about you know whether it's right or wrong because values change over time. Mm-hmm. The saint today is the center of tomorrow and back mm-hmm. and forth, all that kind of stuff. There is no morality. There's no right or wrong. You know, Look at the world as it is today. Live for today. Okay. If there is a heaven or an afterworld, it'll be based on your performance in the world you're living in today. So do the best you can now with what you got. Believe in yourself. Do what you ever got to do. And and it is a struggle because it's so hard to do that because most people are herd animals. They want to, you know, believe in Jesus or the Torah or whatever. I'm just saying that everybody wants to join a clique and a party and everything else because they want comfort in their Uh, herd instinct to be an individual is the heaviest weight there is to bear to do your own damn thing and not worry about what anybody else says Uh and to live without a god who's there checking the scoreboard is this good is this bad i'll do whatever the fuck i want hell yeah baby. that's you know uh dan pena Fuck you, cunts. You ever heard of Dan Pena? <laughs> I know. He's, the, yeah, he's, a, he's, he's, the, he's a millionaire, He's the most right? psycho. Yeah. He's the most psycho of all, but he's saying the same damn thing. Uh-huh. Live. Do your own damn thing. Believe in yourself. Yeah. I eat men like you for breakfast, he says. You know? And it's... So all that stuff. I mean, again, I'm, dude, I'm 24 hours a day. I'm either here uh-huh. reading or studying this stuff, which can warp you and make you nuts and crazy and everything else. But again, you got you to gotta have that to succeed, man. And... I could die in infamy. It doesn't matter. This is what tailors to my taste. I do what I do. I enjoy uh-huh. what I do. If I die in infamy, so be it. But at this point, I'm getting a statue. Yeah. And most people respect and think I'm a pretty good guy, and I do my best to do that. So I mean, you seem to be a pretty good guy. And my brain goes man. all over the political spectrum and the uh, phil- so? philosophical spectrum. I'm just saying it because I study all kinds yeah. of different things. I don't know where I am. Where do you, where do you usually land? Because, I mean, you do, you do, it seems that, you know, if you were in support of Trump, you were on the right side. But you seem to be, you don't believe in God, I'm assuming. Or you believe he uh, might be there. I'm knows. here. Something made me. Yeah. I have that. That's one of, Again, I have so many tapes about so many different perspectives. Uh-huh. But the one that's in my tape right now is saying that I'm here. Somebody put me here. I want to do what I want to do. I, I mean, who put me here? Who made me the way I am? A friend of mine always said, well, God made you the way you are. He wasn't necessarily saying that complimentarily. He was saying, yeah. well, God made you who you are. It's like, be who you are. You know, so Stick whatever the guns. fuck I want to do, uh-huh. that's what I'm going to do. Period. Yeah, some people might, might. It's self-authorized. I'm self-authorized. Is, have people called you selfish before? No, uh, I've heard that. Whatever, selfish and selfless, the same mm-hmm. thing. But you, you choose to believe you're not. Yeah. 
They watch me from sun up to sundown. I got up this morning, took four poops, sat down <laughs> in the chair, drank my coffee, read my, didn't want to get out of bed. I was grumpy. I didn't sleep because I couldn't sleep because I worked so hard yesterday. It was freezing. Yeah. Uh, had my coffee, wrote down how wonderful I am, read my stuff from the other day, kind of got mm-hmm. myself in a good mood, drank my coffee, picked up my guitar, got here. And I've been like here four and a half hours now, making everybody happy, rocking and rolling. Now we're doing this podcast. Killing I it. did a couple projects earlier today too. Somebody asked me to, whatever, you know, two video shoots, whatever, uh-huh. fifty bucks and a hundred bucks. I'm gonna go to the gym when I go home and kill myself to fucking push as much weight as I possibly can. Go home, treat my wife with respect, love her, have fun, watch a movie, go to bed, and do it again tomorrow. If if that's evil. Then damn me. And doesn't, I don't care. I'll burn in hell for it. I'm, I'm doing what evil. I want. If I'm wrong, good be it. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, you live by your own creed, man. Yeah. I, I respect that. How? Um, Everybody does. Even if they've adopted other elements of other people's creeds and their own creed. They're still, still living by your creed. own creed. You're still making a choice. Why don't you just yeah. choose something you, you believe in or choose something you like? I mean, what are you, a martyr? Yeah. I have to do this. No, you don't. You have to choose what you get to do. You're you're aggressive about your your mindset too. It's like you 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 believe it so fully that you're. I can feel the fervor when you're talking about it, which I mean, it's good that that's what's kept you going for what twenty years, right? Well, I'm gonna be forty eight in December. Jeez, it's kept me going for forty eight now. Forty forty eight years. Is is that what you're telling yourself when you're out there in the cold? I'm the best. I'm doing it. I'm 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 the naked cowboy. I'm I'm killing the game. Uh, well, I will have moments where uh-huh. I'm, I'm the most celebrated. You know, in other words, you have those moments of doubt, called levity. levity. No, yeah. the, the moments where you're like you're like I'm, I'm best. doing it. And yeah, like you I'm, catch yourself I'm, doing it. Uh, but you're self aware. Yeah. Yeah, just because of the intensity. And again, it's not even cold yet. But you know, it gets worse yeah. already. Though it feels like oh my. Oh my God, it's going to be cold. Yeah, it's I'm 45 scared. already. I'm back down the car. Like, get a little vodka. And, oh my God, it's going to be so. And then you go out there, it's like, that's not even cold. <laughs> you know, and even when it's freezing, it's always like, ah, you know, always make it out to be a monster. Yeah. All right. So my point is that before I get there, I'm the most self reflective, worry wart, whiny little baby bitch. Yeah, I call yeah. my friends. They're like, oh, come on, you're a star. Your time's yeah. great. All that. You know, you just can't see it because you don't stop. You're in the woods. You can't see it. And blah blah blah. But when I get out there, as you put the clothes on, as you uh-huh. get out there, the intensity of it makes you forget yourself. So it's actually out there in my prime when I'm rocking and rolling. It's kind of zen. Yeah, uh, yeah. you're there. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? I mean, I'm the, an entirely different person. And from the second I leave, I start become more morose. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's again, it's like working with people. Yeah, you're yeah. working with a no, normal person. They go to a restaurant. They work all day. They're friendly, and then they're a little grouchy when they get home. Mm-hmm. I go out here, and I'm a saint, and I come back, and I'm a devil. You're a devil. So it's just, you know, it's the intensity of what I'm doing. But not to the wife. Well, I feeling. mean, if I got punch her in the face once in a while, oh, I mean, that's just that's the price you got to pay for being Mexican. Oh God, I hope not. Jeez. No, I'm... <laughs> I know you're kidding. Holy shit! It's wonderful. That's so fucked. That's funny, man. Uh, because you're joking, so everyone knows listening. Yeah, yeah. It's called knows. a joke. Guys. We are, again, that, and that's the other thing about uh-huh. what I do too. You know that the intensity of it. Yeah. I had a guy come up today. Yeah, the Jew. He actually he shot a video, okay. but he had the Hanukkah, everything else. The Hanukkah, yeah. And I said, I said, you know, I'm sorry about what happened, in Pennsylvania. You yeah, know, blah, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah. I said, blah, blah. I love, I, you know. Uh-huh. I said, I said, look, I said, I don't like Jews either, but I wouldn't kill you. <laughs> and, the, and the girl says, Oh, he's so cute. He's <laughs> so like cute. That. You know, and again, yeah. just to be able to make a joke about anything at any time. Mm-hmm. It's not my father, my grandfather, my brother. I mean, my whole family's kind of a. Uh, I like that. You know, jokesters. Yeah, pretty much. They don't. No one takes things too seriously. Never. And I mean, you know, obviously, to if uh, you got a big heart, you can say whatever the hell you want. Because you're saying they don't know me. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just joke. saying. I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, snap people out of their state, make them laugh. Make okay. Them yeah. You're a comedian. Joel, Joel you know what I'm talking about. That's what Come on, comedy's on. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I'm, are you I may a comedian? Be, I maybe. What is comedy? I maybe wouldn't make a joke about it uh, two days after the shooting, but if you, if you, if the guy liked it, then that's fine. Oh, I thought it was day three. What is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, three days is when it's okay. Rule well, threes. Yeah. 
That's Once what we're again, saying, Bobby? I already, I already had rapport with them. Ah, uh, yeah, And yeah. they both You'd laughed broken. and thought uh-huh. it was the funniest thing they ever heard. So, again, if you, if you have the skill, you can do whatever you want. I could have gone to the church and done it, but I didn't want to show off. Yeah, oh, you don't want to show off? Do your five minutes in front of a church? I don't know about that. All right, let's let's move on before I get arrested. (laughs) You're not going to get arrested, man. It's it's showing who you are. It's no big deal. People listen to this, they want to know. Because here's the thing. People see you in Times Square, and they go, I wonder who that guy is. Because you're out there, you're you're in your underwear, you're you're working, like like you said, every single day. And they want to know the mindset of the guy that is just nonstop doing that. So they're getting a taste of it right now, you know. You have a, a pretty um, wild sense of humor, which is nice. It's what keeps you going probably during 32-degree weather. You you know, you got to, you know. It's funny you up? say that. Like, I'll come out of this garage and I'll uh-huh. be so morose. Yeah, but, you, you just, know, yeah. take a, I prepare myself. Talk yourself through I it? walk out there. I'm walking uh-huh. out there. Okay. Grumpy is holy shit, but the first opportunity, you know what I mean? You know how it is. You'll all of a sudden it's completely money, yeah. say something so off the wall, and it's like you crack yourself up, and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's still you know, it's that pendulum. You're keeping yourself, uh, keeping yourself. I'm just tightly wound. Yeah. Are you? Are you tightly it's not, wound? It's not intentional. Uh huh. I mean, like I said, with more days off, maybe I'd be a little more deliberate. But yeah, my, why don't you? Why don't you give yourself? I can't stop. A break. You, you can't stop. I'm you psycho. You're psycho. Okay. I gotta get up. I gotta come here. I'm trying not to. Oh, you don't. I'm do trying you, to quit. I've tried to quit. <laughs> really? You <laughs> think it's like years. an OCD thing where you just can't stop? Nah, I wouldn't call it that because I don't yeah. like the stigma of like. It's, 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 yeah, I'm. I'm not saying the negative connotation, but it's something where it's like first you get it uh-huh. and then it gets you. That's goal setting. Okay. Until you become, they say, no one is truly free until they are a complete slave to their mission. So that's okay. all. And I'm just saying, that's how I feel like it is. I've, you live by creeds. No matter how many times I say I'm not coming or I don't want to do it today, my feet are taking me there, I just can't stop. And then every day it rewards me, so I just can't quit. What do you think you'd do if you weren't doing this? I can't even imagine You it. can't even imagine it? I swear to God. Talking about retire. My manager saying, you should retire. Uh-huh. Say you're going to retire on the 20. You ought to get us the biggest store we ever had. Yeah. Come to California for two weeks and then go back. Uh-huh. I was like, I just can't even take one day off. How can I take two weeks off? I can't. What's the longest you've taken off? I've never taken off. I mean, what? I've, I've gone to seven different countries. I've okay. gone. To, I mean, one went to Japan. I couldn't work for a whole day because I was in air in the air. Uh-huh. When my mother died, I told her to die on a festival day, and she did. So I went home, was able to go to the funeral and still do an Oktoberfest at the same Jesus. time. Jesus. And she knew exactly what I was talking about. She died from, on the right time. This, wow. I mean, you told your mom to die on a specific day. Oh, I so said, don't keep... die when I can't be there. I mean, if you want me to show up at the funeral, you better die at the right time. Holy shit, man. And she's like, I know, I'm trying. I'm trying. How old is she when she passed away? Uh, she wasn't that old. She had MS, so she had... Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. So you're addicted, you would say, to this. I'm addicted to me. <laughs> you're addicted to yourself. But it feels like Well, I'm addicted like to my purpose. To... When you set a goal, you say you're going to do something, you read it and you rehearse it every single day. Uh-huh. You write out your, dude, I, d- I can show it to you. I got the paper right here. I've seen it. It's them. my I physical s- goals, financial goals, social goals, physiological goals, historical goals. My Times Square beliefs are like 47. Nobody can claim their presence and place on Times Square. Uh, only in New York is a coined world concept, idea, reality. Without consulting me, they will never know what it means every day i convert thousands of people who don't know about me into thousands of people who do know know about me because all the people around there are telling them and i could go and it's like non-stop i've done this for 20 freaking years i've read it every day i've been on an elliptical for two hours a day reading reading that same thing in a state of peak emotional intensity totally robin style Uh i can't stop me either tony works for you robin's that goal yeah that was I've read many, many people since, but the, you know it's all the uh-huh. same. It's all the same scheme, you know. Just you write it, you think it, you live it. What you think about, you bring about. What you focus on comes about. I go you work on by that. I could, I could do motivational seminars the rest of my life and quit now. Seems like it, man. <laughs> Maybe you should do that. Do Nick it, Nick well, Cowboy. Tony we'll Robbins you does to seven, seven day seminars, yeah. three day seminars, forty three hour seminars. Have you went my to my seminar? Of them? No, I don't need to. Just like I don't need to meet Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter to me. I get the I get the gist. Well, My one goal of them you can meet to... easily. Another one we don't know if he's coming back. 
My goal wasn't to be like Tony Robbins. My goal was to be so powerfully in tune to what I was doing that instead of coming to me for, you know, three days, seven day, eight day seminars, you mm -hmm. come up and within 30 seconds you get it. And if you don't hit the road, it's not even an option. You will. Wow. When you meet the naked cowboy, you see the naked cowboy, you know the naked cowboy, yeah. and there's absolutely nothing else you can see but the naked cowboy as it is. And that's all you want to do. And you be whoever the hell you are on the same level. So or you're, don't. You're I mean, inspiring you don't people with your, with your, with your creed. You, you wanted to run for president, didn't you? No, I no. ran for president to get a hell of a lot of media, and I did. If you, uh, if you YouTube out. naked cowboy president, you'll see the best... Uh -huh. presidential display you ever saw <laughs> what plus was the it? best q a with tmz yeah sir 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 oh uh, are you wearing your underwear next question <laughs> sir <laughs> every question was like a howard stern i was like yeah. but i was so dead serious you can't run for president it's a joke i had my suit yeah. and tie haircut i was serious and I've rehearsed that speech a thousand times. It was Michael Savage, mm -hmm. Mark Levin, Sean Hannity, the summaries of their books. It was cutthroat. Exactly what Trump ran on. I did that before him. But, you know, I'm again, I'm Nate Cowboy. I'm not Donald yeah, Trump. Yeah, you weren't actually going to run for president. Well, you just I wanted was. To get some, I would, well, I would have press. if anybody would have cared. But, yeah, of course, yeah. it, it doesn't work that way. It was just a way to get But the point is, all the you. questions were the stupid. Would you have rather have sex with Betty White or somebody uh -huh. else? I'm like... Who's Betty White? I didn't know who Betty White was. Like, you know who Betty and, White and, and, was? And, and, and the guy goes, did he say he doesn't know who Betty White is? <laughs> it's so you're not watching a lot of TV, I'm guessing. I don't watch TV. I work. You don't watch TV? No. So what's your what's your day look like? You wake up. I get up. You get some coffee. I have coffee. Uh -huh. Read, write in my journal every single day. I might grab a couple books and get a few insights. Otherwise, I read my journal entries from the day before because I'm okay. always writing when I get in the right juice and the writing. All right. I come to Times Square. Or I go to the gym first, or I come here and then I go to the gym on the way home. Okay. I kill it. Mm -hmm. I go home. Me and my wife will watch a movie, mm -hmm. Netflix, or one of our own movies. Same stuff every time. I don't want any distracting information coming in that I'm not aware of. Only like a movie. What? I don't want to see some adverse movie about a day in a life of some moron with cancer or some bullshit. I don't want to fill my head with crap. Oh, you want so to get I upset? watched Rocky. I watched no, not about being getting upset. I just want to fill my head with images of things I don't I don't want. I'm yeah. I'm, con I'm directing and throwing my life. I yeah. live in my own damn bubble. Uh -huh. And then we go to bed. And if I sleep, so be it. If I don't, I lay there and relax, meditate. We get, I do it again. Okay. Same thing for twenty years. Nothing's changed. You're not one to, damn thing. You're going to the gym every day. Not every day, but, but pretty much. I go a lot. Yeah, okay. I go enough to look like I look like. I mean, yeah, I mean, at 40, 48, you're looking pretty damn good, man. 47. I'm 48 oh, in oh, December. 48 in December. Bitch. Sorry about that. I'll be sure to send you a happy birthday text, though. Thank you. <laughs> so, so you're just a man of habit. You truly are. That's just what you're doing. Like what, Pretty much. It seems like, dude, you don't take any time off to... Do you think that's affecting you negatively? That you're Probably. Just, yeah, I know. So what are you going to do about it? Uh, well, I'm going to bust my ass until the statue, November 8th, uh -huh. because I want it to be a sunny day. I don't okay. want God to look at me and say, oh, oh yeah, yeah, you want a, you want a statue, you want to have a great day in the sun, you want to pretend you get a statue after 20 years, but you're not working the last six days of your 20 years. So <laughs> I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to go all the way to the end. I thought you didn't and even know if God was there. And hopefully it'll all work out and God will be like, great, wonderful, whatever. God, I'm just saying, circumstances. Yeah, yeah. The circumstances universe, have whatever. always followed followed me in a positive way always okay. i feel like i've always done my, you know and when i'm doubting and wondering if it's going to happen everything else it always comes back and i'm like how many times do i have to doubt myself it always works out stay focused it always works out just stay positive but mm -hmm. and again the pendulum keeps going back and forth so same thing this is the next milestone I'm going to make sure it works out, and the next day, maybe, I will take a day off. Dude, I hope you do. But you know what's going to happen? What? It's going to be so freaking amazing, so positive, as yeah. it always is, and the next day, I'm going to be so gung-ho, I'm like, I'm back! <laughs> I'm not going to tell who needs a day off! <laughs> I ain't a pussy! That's how it works! That's how real motivation works. You cannot stop, and you don't need to. You got to give yourself time off, man, to recharge. We'll see. We'll you're, see. You're running on 20 years of nonstop. You're like a car that's never been turned off, and you've just been 
Well, that's some, eight. Yeah. The boat that sits in the harbor gets the barnacles. The that's one that's true. always floating doesn't. Uh, yeah, Life on the coral reef where the freaking water is hitting that reef. It's uh -huh. the most dangerous place in the world. It's where the most vibrant life exists. I go on all day. I've read every book about all that motivation stuff. Uh -huh. Where the, the danger is, or uh, uh, Nietzsche said, build your cities on the slopes of Vesuvius. Okay. Live dangerously. Now, I don't know where the slopes of Vesuvius are, but really? I picture yeah. all these little things on the side of a mountain. He says, live dangerously. You're alive. Yeah. You have to be. I'm so, pretty sure Vesuvius was in Pompeii where they exploded. You know about that? No. Nope. Yeah, the, the, in, in, in Pompeii, in ancient Italy, there was a big, uh, a big volcano there, and it exploded and immediately killed all the people in that town. Um, and well, they didn't he know. pointed they out know. that you should live there. Yeah, I mean, that's I guess, my point. Yeah, okay. So you want to live dangerously is what you're saying. Well, I don't know if I want to, but but you are. The pattern of my life is risk and reward, or uh, how do you say? What is it? Uh, risk and hmm, I forgot that one. Risk and reward. Yeah. Nah. Mm, I don't know. It'll come to you. Whatever. You it's another one of those kind of things where you you're so, all you know. Uh huh. So you take time for. Mm, damn. He's man. thinking. <laughs> you can hear the buttons going. I hear the gears turning. Hold on, man. hold on, hold on. I can hear what? the whole. Shaking his keys. Those aren't my keys. That's the mechanics <laughs> of my brain. That's what your brain sounds like. Well, it's, an, empty, it's an empty chamber. It's okay. I don't know. Risk and responsibility. Risk and responsibility. There you go. Risk okay. The point is that you, every day. Mm -hmm. Like when it gets crazier and crazier as the winter, yeah, it gets going. You're drinking uh -huh. a little vodka to go out there. You have to make you, you feel warm. Can't. No, it just relaxes your central nervous system. Yeah, and so you don't shake like crazy and you're not grunt. You know, you, yeah, yeah, it yeah. puts you in a good mood. Come on, okay. I'm an entertainer. Yeah, if yeah. I'm gonna be out there 30 minutes, I got to be at my best. I can't go out there grumpy and pissed off. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna serve me. So I'd rather get trashed and do five minutes, which it's not that bad. <laughs> but the point is. There's a certain level of risk to do any job. You could get killed, you could die, it's cold, you get hypothermia. Oh, I yeah. get that stuff three times a day. So yeah. there's risk and also the responsibility mm -hmm. not to, you know, get trashed, get a DUI on the way home. I go on all day. You have yeah, to, yeah. you have to, you know, I come in here every day for 20 years. I got to come in, be a respectful citizen, get in, get out. And, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to ruin my reputation or do anything stupid. You can't. I gotta stay focused. You're, just, you're staying. I mean, that this but entire podcast is, is showing when you're, you're staying focused. Living this way, it's uh -huh. you can go as far as you can without falling over. Razor's edge of the now, as they say. Yeah, it sounds like you can be pretty stressful at times. How in the winter when it's like 25 degrees out? Are you going out for 30 minute intervals and then coming back in and warming I'm up? I'm going out as long as I can. Coming back, uh -huh. I put my fur coat on. I okay. got my weights. I'm down here. I could be down here three hours to get another 10 minutes. Okay. Three hours to get another 10 minutes. I'm here 11 to 7 every get some day. some money. Yeah. It's not about the money. It's yeah. about getting, staying as frequent as I can and getting as much attention as I can in the place where I want to be associated with for the rest of the time. So you're telling me you care more about being here and people knowing you as a infamous uh character not infamous or, or, Infam uh, i'm infamous sorry infamous. to be a yeah. bad or ill exactly. report so famous I've, is to I've, be respected and yeah. loved and recognized as you want to be a, a, a famous like um character i want to inspire known. people for all time i want them to see my image and say uh -huh. that motherfucker went all the way he did everything he could possibly do he gave everything he had he created yeah. something he made his own life he made his own money did everything else was very charitable to other people, did a great job in his life, and God damn it, he said he wanted to be somebody, and he became somebody, and he, he just did it on his own. Shit. In the, in the conversation. That's it. Everybody should do that. Who? Why, why, what else are you going to do? Or you're selling out. But you're not doing it for the money. You're doing it for well, that Well, I mean, you make money. I mean, the, the money's fine, but like, I'm saying like, you care more about people knowing the I naked would rather, cowboy. I would rather be successful and have an influence on mankind uh -huh. than have a little extra money during my own life. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's tempting. Of course, you need money. Yes. You don't want to be broke. But, uh -huh. I mean, it's not like I'm choosing between broke and being someone. I can yeah. be someone. I mean, it's, if you're actually being someone, you're not going to go broke. You know, at least be able to take care of yourself. And if you really want to be someone mm -hmm. and that's what satisfies you, then being broke won't be a big deal. Because you still are somebody. Uh, that's what I'm saying, yeah. I mean, most people are broke and they're nobody. 
And so, at least to be a broke somebody's a little better. <laughs> be a, I don't need, need that broke much. Nobody. <laughs> I mean, a bro, if I can be a broke somebody, I mean, well, obviously I'll you can make it. money doing this because you, you know, what? people or people have tried to copy you, haven't they? Haven't you? Have you had to deal with people trying to be their own naked cowboys? Like Nick, I, I know, Naked I know Cowboy were, Enterprises yeah. is a franchise, and it's we franchise, have several yeah. cowboys and cowgirls all over the country. But did you have to deal at first with people trying to copy you? We've had several federal lawsuits, starting with really? M&M Mars when they made the Naked Cowboy M&M. And yeah, I saw they had that. And that and there was, was a couple cool. of commercials. I mean, it was resolved, and uh-huh. we love them. They love us. You guys are good, yeah. You dealt with, like, Coles or something as well, did a commercial, right? Didn't some other? Mm, I don't know about Coles. But... Yeah, or some... some... We had one with CBS Television. CBS, that's what it was. Yeah. But you figured it out. There's been several. Naked Cowgirl. Uh-huh. Yeah, so what happened with the Naked Cowgirl? She's that was... still the Naked Cowgirl. She had to separate her name to Naked uh-huh. Cowgirl slash Sandy Kane. We gave her permission to use the name without fee to us. Wow. But we always own Naked Cowboy. Naked Cowgirl is the same intellectual property because the USPTO will not allow it to allow uh-huh. uh, it to... Uh, how you say reside separate from us okay so we always owned it technically but mm-hmm. not or we owned it and right but not you didn't want to basically cause any when we sued her okay. and gave her permission to use it even free of charge because she wasn't yeah. going to go away anyway we became the one in a court precedent who gave her permission to use that name okay so we then became the you know Propri- and, the yeah, owner we, of that yeah, name as we, well yeah technically ah, okay. or you know in name and so you can, so someone can uh, come up to you and say, "Hey, I want to pay you a couple grand a year, or whatever," and then I get to be a naked well, cowboy. Yeah, you can yeah. sign a, you know, you can sign a franchise agreement, and be a cowboy. We have one wow. in Texas, we have one in Las Vegas, we have one in uh, Germany that's not licensed to us. But my wife's a naked cowgirl. She's a naked cowgirl. She's also franchised, and so is uh-huh. her sister. And so we've had cowboys and cowgirls down the line for several years. Several years. But when when did you when when were you doing this that you're like oh you know what I can make enough money to be success like do you want to have a family do you do you have any kids do you want to continue I don't with believe that? in no. kids you don't believe in kids they cost money they <laughs> distract me from myself you'd be everybody I know uh-huh. has a kid says the kids the number one thing in their world and you don't want I don't that. need that in my life no <laughs> <laughs> no honestly if if uh, yeah. my wife's Mexican uh-huh. she's she loves kids and everything else. I'm not against kids, but mm-hmm. until I have enough money to do everything I want to do and be who I want to be and everything else without it being a distraction, I'm not doing it. It's that simple. What would it take for you to go, I'm going to I'm gonna pull back and have a child? Again, what, what I have would nothing against kids. No, I no, just... no, no, no. I'm saying you said you wanted to get to a point of success, get to uh, uh, what you feel like is the pinnacle. What mm-hmm. would have to happen for you to take a step back and be like, Robert, I think it's time. I've made it. I've made it. I've made enough money. I, I have enough fame. Now I can finally have a child. W- would something have to happen or is I don't it just know. never going to happen? I haven't got there. I can't speak about something I don't know anything about. Really? Okay. All I know is that right now we're living in our apartment and it's like... Uh-huh. Like six thousand five hundred dollars a month. We're going Jeez. into winter. Where the hell is this apartment? I just apartment, bought this man? damn huge statue. Woodside. No, it's not uh, yeah. just the apartment. It's okay. Every, oh, oh, every oh, single, all the I expenses. Keep every yeah, single got receipt it. that I spend every single month is uh-huh. about six thousand five hundred dollars, okay. and has been for years. Yeah. So until so I'm we completely as, comfortable, uh-huh. we have health insurance and all the other things. I yeah. mean, dude, we're living on the edge, bro. So, so we so. I'm not trying to overextend myself. So Warren Buffett, number one rule. Uh-huh. Don't overextend yourself. Don't overextend yourself. Yeah. Live within your means. So I, we're hoping, I don't need more. We're hoping at the least you're making $66,000 a year to pay for the 65. Oh, wow, shit, more than that. Maybe like 73 to pay for the uh, 6500 a month that you're spending, right? Mm. Yeah. We're yeah. hoping you're making at least that. Yeah. Well, yes. again, I'm, I yeah. have a voracious spending uh, a voracious uh, investment portfolio. Oh, you my invest money's in... going. Yeah, my money's going in my investments. Okay, if so you I, invest I, a investments lot. come first. Yeah. Okay, so you invest in stock. Merrill market? Lynch, Jason Pete Myers. Okay, how'd you get involved in that? How'd you? Uh, uh, how'd met you... him when I was 18 years. I met him as a kid. He's a big Warren Buffett guy. A guy at at Merrill Lynch. Yeah, he's been at Merrill Lynch and different other companies. He's big guy. Does a good job. He's controlled your finances for 20 years or something. Yep. And he's kept you uh, having good enough returns that you stick Again, with Again, I've had months where I was kicking ass, and now we're just in a dry period. So my focus is on same thing always. 
taking care of as many people as I can, getting as much uh-huh. publicity as I can, and building my portfolio and building my net worth and building my value in the world. But like I said, we're, you know, but how I'm you going taking- in the winter. It feels like a struggle. The last thing I want to do is be taking care of someone else at the exact same time. My no, wife's like a baby already. <laughs> you have to deal with her. Yeah. yeah. Help yeah. her out. I mean, yeah. she she works she no. works too, right? No. I paid for everything since the day I met her. She hasn't paid a damn thing. Spent twelve thousand dollars in immigration fees uh-huh. or immigration lawyers, everything else. Now she's going. Now we're going to Mexico on the twenty eighth or the seventeenth mm-hmm. to the twenty eighth to the. What is it? Eighteenth to the twenty seventh. Nine days in January. Are you going to be so, working there, or are you going to be taking I time off? I work there too. Oh, I do Jesus, the exact same man. thing. I do the Zocalo. I almost got arrested last time. I'm all stressed out. Uh-huh. Not stressed out, but. You're I almost got arrested out. last time. I can show you videos right here with uh-huh. the cops coming, trying to arrest me, her and her brother, stopping them. So now we're going back there okay. to Mexico where they yeah. kill gringos. <laughs> and, you know, and I'm going to be eating tacos and getting fat. I don't want to, but that's what they serve you at you their mother's house. I'm just saying. it's this, yeah. The air quality sucks. You can't even find a cockroach because there's so much contamination. Oh, you think the air quality And I'm going to be working every day. Nobody's got a freaking exhaust pipe the whole place stinks i again mm-hmm. i love it it was the most beautiful place i ever saw but i'm just saying when i'm at night worrying about how am i gonna pay for you know i'm just you know it's, yeah. it's winter yeah yeah i'm not making money i know i'm working you know i'm the same bro i get it no you're the I'm same just saying you... i'm focused on where i'm at and right mm-hmm. now this is the time where I, I tighten my belt okay no pun intended I yeah have no belt. Well, there's no belt on yeah and but... uh you have a good, t- good and, enough and time. And I wifey. think about Mexico and all that kind of stuff. I'm just saying, I, uh-huh. I'm a, I'm a warrior for some reason. You worry. What? What do you worry about? Just that. making money. Just Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> what? Just getting arrested there. Just getting home alive. Yeah. You really that worried about getting home alive when you get there? Oh, again. Uh huh. This conversation is a function of exactly this day and time. And uh-huh. Because I've been worrying about the statue, because of all these other things, and I'm you just, just you know, I'm just saying, I yeah, I think it's just it's a you know, it's a function 99% of Ninety-nine percent of the time, I'm totally positive, focused, not worried about a thing. Uh-huh. Ballsiest guy in the world. And as soon as we get done with this, uh-huh. I'm gonna go back out there and be the, exactly that ballsy guy because it's just a routine of what I do every single day. Did you ever get? Um, it was never embarrassing for you to snip, strip down to your underwear. Probably because of the stripping, because you had already done that, so you didn't care about anything else? Uh, I just don't even think about it. Really? I mean, you work out, your your body's good, so... But it, you never, like, but when you first started doing small, it... my penis is small, is that what you're trying to say? I haven't seen your penis, but I mean, I guess well, I look, could look, look it up look on Playgirl. Check, check I don't need on, Jesus, look, he's trying to show me his thing. cock. Oh, jeez, look, look at that thing. Wow, that's huge. fucking thing is, like, bigger than my pinky. Holy shit, that it's thing almost is almost as big as my pinky. Damn. Sorry, I had to do that to you. So you're he probably going to go me. become a porn star now it's, after you've um, seen yeah. that. Well, after you see one cock, you become a porn star. I think that's the... Well... Nietzsche said that, right? Depends which one you see. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, I mean, you weren't embarrassed because you had already been stripping you didn't care. I don't know. I what think when you? I was young, I uh-huh. just I felt more emboldened. As I got older, you know, I don't care because it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Come on. They're black guys with 12-inch cocks. Yeah. I mean, they're... Or, Chinese people with uh, you know, like uh, the guy in a Hangover. I mean, yeah, I mean, it doesn't Kendrick. matter. It just doesn't matter. Love is love. I'm married. My wife likes me. Who gives uh-huh. a shit? Okay, okay, yeah, you never. I don't care. I'm worried about it. I mean, it's just not, it's not my shtick. No pun intended. When you were first doing it though, before you were married, were you getting a lot of girls coming up to you trying to sleep with you? No, really, never. I've always had a committed relationship in my life. Oh, you've always been okay. I don't screw around. I ain't no. got time for that. I'd be as dumb as doing drugs or something else. I don't need distraction. I know what I'm doing. I do it every day. Only drug you do is alcohol? Yes. That's it. Who and said I did alcohol? I mean, about? drink alcohol. Yeah. Who said that? You said you're taking shots of vodka oh, yeah, before about, you well, go well, out I forgot to, about that. Sorry. Yeah. You're taking shots of vodka before you go out in the middle of winter. You got to do that. I've done all kinds of stuff, actually. Well, not all kinds of stuff, uh-huh. but in this, in my years here and the guys coming out of the kitchen. Uh-huh. This, you know. But I've overcome all this stuff. I don't... You become susceptible to your friends and what they're doing, and they're hanging out. And you do this, little this, and that, but mm-hmm. you know, maybe weed or whatever, yeah. stuff like that. But I don't. Weed's not too bad. I like weed. You like yeah. weed? I love weed. Yeah, that's good. You should smoke some weed when you go out and do that. It'll probably make it more fun. 
What, are you ready? What? <laughs> no, I don't got some on me, but you should have told me I would have brought some, man. Well, I didn't say I didn't have any. <laughs> I said, you I mean, want some? I wouldn't I mean, ask you if you wanted I mean, uh, if I didn't have it. Oh, uh, okay, what about, okay. What am I, some God, kind of had... impolite host? Uh, no, uh, yeah, you're, you're, being, you're being a great host. Are we good? So how do you, yeah, we're, let's, let's finish up. What, so, I mean, I think we got want... like... Seven, got, seven feature films here. We got at least seven feature films. Oh, how do you saying. how do you want people to remember you? How do you want people I want to them see right a, now? just like a generally a basically a naked guy in his underwear? And That's all you are. That, that motherfucker worked his fucking ass off. Uh-huh. And he was a naked cowboy. Pull that up so you yeah. Sorry. You, you uh, once cowboy. again, uh-huh. how do they want them to remember me? If yeah. they just you know, like I said, it's all about the image. Mm-hmm. I mean, the image. In other words, just and again, it's simplicity. Kiss. My brother's the biggest Kiss fan that ever lived. Mm-hmm. He's going on the eighth Kiss cruise, either this week or next week. He's going to see Chris Jericho or somebody else. I think he said two. And he's got a Kiss pinball machine. He's got the five thousand dollar Kiss coffin that he'll be buried in. That plays "I Want to Rock and Roll oh, All shit. Night" with an in, uh, uh, a titanium battery that lasts for a million years. Seriously, he's the most dedicated heart. He's got. Hair twice as long as mine, thicker, beautiful red hair. Oh, he's man. a rock star. He's always been that way. He's been in bands. He was my, always my hero, my older brother. Yeah. What was my point? Uh, what were we talking about? Why even bring How him up? How do you want people to remember you? Well, well, anyway, Kiffs, keep it simple, stupid. Keep, oh, okay. And he tells me I'm the greatest self promoter of all time. <laughs> yeah, you kind of are. He's not going to be here for my statue because he's going to uh-huh. be on a Kiss cruise. That's fine. Screw you, little brother. Oh, yeah, little bro. Yeah, whatever. I thought but, he was your older bro. He, I'm saying he's saying, oh, I'm saying, screw uh, you, little bro. Yeah, he's got to go see you. Kiss. Yeah. But the point is that, you know, it's just it's just like Kiss. I got three chord songs, mm-hmm. and I look cool. And you yeah. remember me. It's just it's the same as Kiss. Everyone That's why I grew you. up on Kiss. He made me. So you just want to be remembered as the naked well, cowboy yeah. in Times Square? Well, just a guy doing his own thing. Yeah. And do your own thing and see the rewards of it. And I want to succeed on every level so that mm-hmm. people see that success can be brought on every level for just admiring and you know ad- adhering to your own kind of inner voice as to what you think you should do so listen like to it or the, not. yeah listen to that inner voice and just keep it up no matter what yeah well yeah, yeah. and i also like i said we uh, here we go again huh. i always go from one into the other it's okay that inner voice can uh-huh. also turn around on you and it's, tell you to stop 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 you know again uh-huh. that's, you gotta find a happy medium and just you know you gotta yeah. you gotta agree on something you're all yeah. I, I guess i'm saying do it no matter what. Okay. You'll have doubts. And the closer you get to what you want, the bigger the doubts will be, but you just press on. That's Amen. all it works. That was awesome. Thanks for doing it, Robert. Anytime. We all go a little mad sometimes. 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 Haven't you? Haven't you? Haven't you?